Today, we'll be learning how to place stops on spreads within the Thinkorswim web platform. We're going to be going through a few different examples using stops on different types of spreads like verticals, iron condors, and even butterflies. We're also going to be covering how this is done on a position you already hold, as well as how to attach it to a brand new trade. But just as a quick reminder, I will be using the web-based version of Thinkorswim, so if your platform looks a little bit different than this one, you are probably on the desktop site. In order to access this one, you'll just need to head to the website trade.thinkorsim.com and then go ahead and log in with the exact same user ID and password that you normally use. But now that we're back in, let's go ahead and begin first with a position we already hold in the account. Looking down here below on my positions page, you can currently see I've got a butterfly spread on AMD. We can also see to the right the price at which I bought it for, 235. We can see the current price, 245, as well as how much I am up or down since buying that butterfly. Now, although I'm currently up on this spread, let's go ahead and say that I wanted to put a stop loss on it to get me out and hopefully cut my losses before I lose too much money. For this example, let's just say I wanted to get out if it ever dropped below two bucks since I didn't want to lose more than $35. Doing that is actually fairly easy, and in order to do so, we will simply come back over here to the name of the spread and go ahead and click on it. So click on Butterfly here. That will then automatically take us to the trade page for AMD, where we can actually see all of the AMD positions right here in the center of the screen. This one is a bit more annoying since it doesn't tell you the name of the spread like we saw on the previous screen, but here we can see all three legs of the Butterfly. And we can also see that all three legs are checkmarked over here on the left hand side. So since they are checkmarked, we can now come over here to the lower right hand corner of the screen and hit close selected. That will then automatically build out a closing order to close all three of those legs and sell that butterfly. If you were to look at the top of the order ticket, it actually spells it out for us. So it tells us right here we're about to sell one butterfly. And these are the legs 75, 80 by 85. At the moment, it defaults to the current price of that spread using a limit order, and that order is good for the day. So if I wanted to sell this butterfly immediately, I could sell it for $244, but since I wanted to put a stop on it, we can come over here to the order type where it currently says limit, go ahead and click on that. Within that menu, we can then see all the different stop types available to us, which includes the stop market, the stop limit, as well as the trailing stop. Beginning up here at the top, so the stop order or the stop market order, this is going to allow us to set a very specific price and then if the spread ever hits that price, a market order is going to get submitted to sell it immediately. Right below that we've got the stop limit which is almost identical to the previous example, it is very similar, but instead of a market order being submitted we are going to use a limit price. So that's going to allow us to set a minimum amount that we're willing to accept to sell this spread. But again, pretty similar to the standard stop market order. Now the final one in the list here, the trailing stop order, this one lets us set a trailing amount rather than a very specific price. Meaning instead of us saying if the spread ever goes below 2 get me out, we're now saying that if it ever drops by 5% get me out, or if it ever drops by 50 cents get me out. So that essentially means that we want the stop to move up along with the spread, and then if it ever drops by that amount, then we want to exit the trade. But I know that can be a little bit confusing if you're brand new to stops, so for now we're going to keep things simple and flip it over to the stop market order. That will then allow us to set the stop activation price right here. And remember, in this example, I'm saying if it ever trades below 2, get me out of it. The very last thing I can do before submitting it is come over here to the right where it currently says time in force day, which means this order is only going to be active up until 4 p.m. Eastern time, and instead go ahead and flip it on over to GTC or good until canceled. So now the stop is going to go out every single day until it fills or until you cancel it, and now that everything is set, we can come down here below and hit review, and then send to actually place it. Once placed, we can now see the order a couple different places, but to begin, if we were to look in the AMD trade section, we can see the butterfly spread right here. So right here is that open order to sell one butterfly with a $2 stop. We could also see it by coming back up here to the positions page, and then coming over here to the right to the activity section. 
Right here, we can see our order to sell one of the AMD butterflies at a $2 stop price. But again, that's how you're going to place a stop on a position you already hold in your account. And it's going to be the exact same regardless of the spread type. So if it's an iron condor, a vertical, anything, you're going to do it the exact same way. Now, in the event that you instead wanted to attach a stop to a brand new trade, it's going to be a little bit different. So going through an example, let's go ahead and say we wanted to do a long vertical call spread. To begin, let's go ahead and come up here to the find a symbol box. And in this case, we're going to throw in Google or G-O-O-G. We can then come down here below on the trade screen and open up the option chain. And now looking over here on the left hand side, we can see all of the expiration dates available for Google. Now I am going to be going through this fairly quick. So if you are unfamiliar with trading options on here, check out this video first and you can get a much more in-depth tutorial on how to use this thing for options. But if we were to jump right in, let's go ahead and open up the March 17th expiration. And now looking down here in the center of the screen, we can see a few of the available strikes. Now, like I said, in this example, we're going to be buying a long vertical call spread. So to begin, I'm going to be buying an at the money or slightly in the money call. And in this case, that would be the 90 strike call. Looking to the left, I can see it's currently trading for 286 by 289. And in order to buy that 90 strike call, I am simply going to be clicking on the asking price of $2.89. That will then build out the order ticket to buy that call. And now in order to turn it into a vertical, we now need to sell an even further out of the money call. For this one, let's just say we wanted to do a five point wide vertical. So I'm going to be selling the 95 strike call and looking to the left, I can see it's currently trading for 89 cents by 90 cents. To sell this one, we'll go ahead and click on the bid price of 89 cents. And now looking down here below, we've got our open order to buy one vertical, looks like the 90 by 95. And we can see the current price of this vertical spread is $2 and one penny. If we were to fill this out from left to right, I'm going to go ahead and leave this set to one. I only want to buy one of these verticals. Now, despite the current price being $2, the price at which I could buy it for right now, let's say I only wanted to buy it if it dropped down to $1.90. So I'm saying I only want to buy this vertical spread on Google if I can get it for $1.90 or better. But let's also say that if that ever happens, if I ever actually buy this spread, I automatically want to put a stop out there to get me out before I lose too much money. So in order to do that, to have an order get submitted after this one, we have to use the advanced order tools. And that's going to be down here below. And we're going to be clicking on the one that says contingent order. You can then see that automatically builds out a closing order ticket just below our opening trade. If you were to look between those two order tickets, we can even see a button telling us how those two orders are linked together. In this example, with the then button selected, it's saying that if the first order ever fills, if we ever actually buy this spread for $1.90, then we want this order to go out there, the order to close out the spread. But before we can actually submit it, we do have to make a couple adjustments to the order. The most important one being we have to turn it over from a limit order to a stop order. We'll then be able to come down here and set our stop activation price. And for this one, if I didn't want to lose more than let's just say 40 bucks on the trade, I'm going to go ahead and set my stop price to $1.50. So I'm now saying that if I buy it for $1.90, I want to get stopped out if it goes down to $1.50 or lower because I wanted to cut my losses at a $40 loss. I'm also going to flip this over from a day order to a GTC order. So this stop is working every single day until it fills. And now in order to place it, I can come down here below and hit review and then send. Once placed, we can always keep track of it by coming back up here to the positions page. And then looking to the right to the activity section, we can see our open order to close the AMD butterfly, but now the open order to both buy one of the Google verticals and then the stop, which is going to go out there right behind the opening trade. Since I know that can be a little bit confusing, let's go ahead and do another example, but this time on a short vertical spread. In this case, let's go ahead and pull up Alibaba or BABA. -B -A. We'll then come back down below to the option chain and let's go ahead and use the exact same expiration as before. We're going to open up the March 17th. We can then see a list of a few of the available strikes right down the center here. 
And for this one, let's also say that we were slightly bullish on Alibaba. But instead of buying a call spread, we want to sell a vertical put spread. Now again, we are going to go through this quickly, but in order to begin, let's come over here to the right and say we wanted to sell the $85 put for $1.40. And now in order to hedge the trade and protect myself in the event that I'm wrong, let's go ahead and buy a 10 point further out of the money put as our hedge. So in this case, we're clicking on 20 cents here. We can now see down here below, we're about to sell one vertical the 85 by 75 put spread, and it looks like we're gonna be collecting $1.19. Now in this case, let's say I didn't wanna do this trade unless I could get $1.50 for it. So that was the only fair price, so $1.50. And next up, in order to place the stop on this, if it ever fills, we're gonna come down here and hit the contingent order button. That will then add a closing ticket below the opening trade. But if you look here, what's very confusing to most people is the fact that this stop order is actually going to be a buy stop. Because remember, we're selling the vertical to get into it, so now to get out of it, we need to buy the spread back. Remembering back, the very first thing we have to do is come down here to where it says limit, and go ahead and flip that over to a stop order, and now we can come over here and set the stop activation price. Just keep in mind that because this is a short vertical spread, we need to put the stop price above the price that we're selling it for. So in this case, if I'm selling it for $1.50, let's say I wanted to get stopped out before I lose more than 50 bucks. In that case, we're going to set our stop to $2 even, saying that if we sell for $1.50, if the spread ever increases in value above 2, put out an order to buy the spread back. I'm also going to be flipping this one over from a day order to a GTC order. And now in order to place it, we'll come down here below and hit review and then send. Just like all of the other examples, if we wanted to check on that, we'll come back here to the positions page. And now looking in the activity section, we can see all of our working orders right here. This time we're selling to open one of the Baba verticals. So now our stop is going to be buying it back if it ever goes above two. By now you've probably got the hang of it, but if we wanted to go through one last example, let's go ahead and do this on an iron condor. In this last example, we'll go ahead and use Amazon or AMZN. We'll again need to come down here to the option chain and go ahead and pick out the expiration date that we wanted to trade. And in this case, let's go ahead and pick April 21st of 2023. Just like before, we're going to come down here to the list of the available strikes, and now we can pick the options that we want to sell and buy to create the iron condor. Going through this quickly, let's just say I thought Amazon was going to stay somewhere between 80, so I'm going to go ahead and sell the $80 put, and let's say 105, so I'm going to go ahead and sell the 105 call. In order to hedge that, I'm going to go ahead and buy 10 point further out of the money wings. And in that case, that would be the 115 call. So I'm clicking on the asking price of the 115 call. And then on the put side, that's going to be the 70 strike put. And in this case, it's going for 33 cents. We can now see the iron condor just down here below. And it looks like we're selling one of the iron condors on Amazon. And you can see here, I'd be collecting $1.72 in premium to do this. In this example, I am totally fine with that amount. So we're going to leave the limit price set as the current price. But this time, we're going to come down here and add a contingent order. We're going to come up here and flip it over from a limit order to a stop order. And in this case, let's say I wanted to get stopped out of this iron condor if it ever went above, let's just say, $2.50. And remember, since we're selling the iron condor to get into it, our stop needs to be above the current price. So I'm saying I want to sell it for, let's just say $1.70 to keep it simple. And then if it ever goes above $2.50, and that would be an $80 loss, get me out of this thing because I didn't want to lose more than $80 on the trade. I'm also going to flip this stop on over to a GTC order. So it goes out every single day. And now in order to place it, we'll come down here below and hit review. And then we'll go ahead and hit send. Now in this example, the order to sell it has actually filled immediately. So if I were to come back here to the positions page, we should actually see I've got a brand new position on Amazon right down here below. And since the opening trade has filled, remember that's going to automatically put out the stop order. So if we come back up here to the activity section and just go ahead and scroll down just a little bit, 
right here we can now see our stop order is active and working to buy back this iron condor if it ever goes up to 250 or higher. But I know that was a lot and hopefully you all have a much better idea on how to place stops on spreads within the web platform. I went through a lot of information only briefly, so if you were interested in learning more, consider checking out this video next, you might find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great rest of your week, and I hope to see you all in the next one.